from Georgia. Yes. Um, okay. I actually, I'll be very brief. Uh, things that came up today, um, I think, are really going to need much further discussion, uh, particularly the situation with respect to so-called soft and, and hard systems. But we'll save that for another day. Um, I, what I want to talk about is this idea of uh, where cybernetics and system science, how, how they fit together. And um, just very briefly, I'm, these are some themes that I've been working on lately uh, and uh, we'll be giving some papers shortly on. Uh, system science is not just a science. It's, it's a meta science or a supra science. Um, and for the reasons given in the bullet points here. Um, so I, I am taking the position that system science is, uh, is, is the umbrella concept under which we find a number of other concepts. Um, I define something called systemness, which are the properties and attributes of anything that we would call a system. And that ranges from uh, nucleons all the way up to cultures. And um, within the system sciences, I've recognized a number of uh, sub meta sciences, if you will, that again apply across all these various scales and ranges of types and, and so forth. And they fall into these kind of neat categories. And um, the uh, the one down toward the bottom here, governance theory, is a container for what uh, we call cybernetics. Uh, this one right here, the universal evolution theory, or what I've been calling ontogenesis, is where do systems come from in the first place and how do they get more complex over the history of the universe? Um, this is from the book that I and Mike Colton wrote. And you notice that I'm highlighting here that one of the chapters that comes uh, within a group having to do with information, communications, computation, and so forth is about cybernetics. And so what I'm claiming is that the proper place to put cybernetics in relation to system, general system science is uh, as one of those subtopics and, and specifically within the governance theory area. One of the uh, things that I've been working on um, lately is something I'm calling a hyper, hi, hierarchical, excuse me, cybernetic governance theory. And I have several papers uh, presented to the ISSS and to a Russian uh, conference that uh, cover these ideas. Um, just real quickly by way of background, um, and this will be more pertinent uh, later if we talk about hard versus soft systems. Uh, I, over my career, I have worked in mechanical systems, biological systems, management systems, uh, and social systems, and uh, with a great deal of success applying some of these concepts is, is given in this slide. Um, there is a reciprocal relation between cybernetics and uh, uh, in all of its various flavors, by the way, I'm just using cybernetics as a, as a uh, holding bin, if you will. Um, but as we look at any complex adaptive system, there's a bi-directional relationship uh, I'm sorry, bi-directional communications um, and error correction at multiple scales. So cybernetics is clearly embedded within any um, aspect of a uh, uh, complex system. However, uh, that being said, oh, without this being true, systems would not exist. In other words, cybernetics is an essential part of systemness, but it is not on, in my view, is not on the same level as uh, system science itself. And uh, that was pretty quick. Stop share. 
So that, that may raise some hackles, I don't know. <laughs> Klaus? <laughs> Klaus, you're still muted. You, you are still muted, Klaus. I am unmuted oh, now. Uh, I actually, I didn't really want to, to uh, uh, make long comments, but I, I do appreciate um, uh, Janshon's uh, approach to critical uh, thinking. Um, uh, and I think that is, that's a, to be closer to what I am always arguing. And I think to me, the, my main objection against several other things is, is the notion of thinking. Well, systems thinking or design thinking is very nice. If you can say, I'm a thinker of X, Y, Z. But this is not the issue. The issue is to act. And I think what I'm missing by the, and this among systems thinkers is the, the, the actions that follow from understanding. So I think to me, uh, the un uncritical approach is one where you, you try to understand what exists to explain, but not do anything about it. So I think this is this is to me, uh, that's where to me critical cybernetics comes in by, by suggesting that one has to do something about it. And in doing things, you verify your view, your theories, et cetera, et cetera. I think system thinking by itself is almost, it, it's, a, it's a nice self-entertainment, but not much more. I hate to say it's so, be so radical because I no doubt <laughs> when 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 one has to start thinking before acting, there there is no doubt about it, but it, that should not stop there. Well, if can I just respond to that because I mean it, I don't think that you could have been listening to anything that I said, Klaus, because the whole of the point of soft systems, emancipatory systems, critical systems was that it was based upon action research. Which is carrying out of carrying out of action and learning from that action. I think you have a particular view of systems thinking or well, system it, science, which you find it impossible to get away from. However yeah. much people say that it is not like that any longer. It, it, it's the, based upon different traditions, different philosophies, different forms of thinking. It's action research based. It's practical. There's there's there are actions and other actions. Engineers act, there's no doubt. But that's just different from acting within society, with well, like changing certain acting. systems. No? I just talked uh, about acting in society and everything I said with regard to soft systems and emancipatory systems and the critical systems. It's all about acting in society and learning from that action. <laughs>